Kate here? I haven't seen Dan, no. our, our, our writer. Um, basically had delivered uh, a deliverance and misery type of story. And when I came on board, um, I kind of added the character of Deacon to kind of miss, uh, you know, change the direction of the film once we get through the half. Kind of like how the Leatherface, you think it's just a killer and then it gets into a different weird family. But, but Dan uh, brought a, a very weird kind of uh, Christian yeah. fundamentalist. Fundamentalist, but, yeah. but uh, clearly, I mean, deranged. Deranged, deranged. yeah. You know, and what I, I basically was the uh, product deranged. of 12 years of Catholic school uh, education. So when I kind of came on board, I started to, uh, you know, put some of that knowledge to use and, and help enhance some of those areas. Uh, well, you know, one of the things um, I really liked uh, was the speech that uh, Clyde has to deliver, which is the longest speech I've ever written in my life. But uh, his Judas speech, I think he pulled it off very well. But uh, it was just kind of to show a little bit of um, the hypocrisy sometimes of this uh, the kind of Christian fundamentalist. I think it was uh, pointed very well when... Uh, you know, Nick has, you know, Clyde's character has no problem with, you know, torture and um, all this kind of stuff, but he, you know, abortion and cussing is, is out of the question. So, that yeah, was kind of a conscious decision to show the extremes on both ends. We spent uh, about $2.6 million uh, on, on the film. Yeah, the, um, yeah, most of it was Nick's salary. Um, you know, we had a and great... And my wardrobe was expensive. <laughs> the, um, one of the really cool things we got out there was um, we were literally hiking 45 minutes into the woods every morning to get all those amazing kind of uh, nature shots. So we thought, like, um, if we're going to go to Romania to these remote locations, let's put that on the screen. And... Uh, one of the things that Romania offered us that, you know, possibly, we, you know, we just didn't, we needed a fully functioning set that could tear apart walls, and we needed a whole upstairs and downstairs, we needed that seclusion, we needed the total control, and uh, when the producers had hitched the plan to me that th this is all possible uh, in Romania, you know, to the conversion of the dollar and the amount of construction we were able to do, it was, you know, the, the whole goal was to try to make it look like 8 to 10 million, and uh, I think it is. The production designer who uh, lives in Romania, John Wellbanks, did a really great job. Uh, the cinematographer had never shot a film before, um, so you know he really busted his ass for us, and you know hopefully we put it all up on the screen. When we went off, it was a it was a privately uh, a private equity that there were two companies, Rifkin Everts and Amark, um, basically put up all the budget of the film. And it was always meant to be uh, done independently and then shown um, and picked up later. They took the, you know, it was one of the uh, risky elements, obviously, of making a movie without distribution set up. But um, uh, as far as I know, and Arnold, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but once they started, once they had the film finished, um, we didn't have any, you know, real pre-sales done until they had a finished film. They went to the Cannes Film Festival, screened it there, and I think it was at that point everything started to uh, fall into place, if, if I'm incorrect. Yep, okay. So basically, it was it was the roll of the dice. I mean, it really was. We just, the, you know, it was the kind of the, the, when I talked earlier about being, you know, humbled by people hiring you, it's, you know, there was no guarantee of the return on their investment. So I'm, I'm glad that it got picked up for not only me and all these people, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's the people who put the money up that, you know, are taking a huge risk, so. Yeah.